Prince Charles' marriage to Camilla opened door for William and Harry. Prince Charles' marriage to Camilla opened the door for Prince William and Prince Harry to marry whoever they like, royal expert Andrew Morton claimed in a documentary. The Queen announced this weekend that she would like Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall to have the title of Queen Consort when her husband Charles becomes King. In a heartwarming message to mark her Platinum Jubilee, Her Majesty said it is her sincere wish that Camilla be accorded Queen Consort status. Camilla has endured a sometimes rocky road since marrying into the royal family some 17 years ago. At first, she was considered a controversial figure, and was blamed by many for the end of Prince Charles' marriage to Princess Diana. Their adultery was exposed in leaked recordings of a telephone call, dubbed Camillagate, as well as claims in Diana's biography Diana, Her True Story, written by Andrew Morton through tapes from the princess herself. Charles himself admitted he had been unfaithful in a 1994 interview, but added that his marriage had irretrievably broken down by this point. Camilla de Vaurkid her husband Andrew Parker Bowles in 1995, followed by Charles and Diana's divorce in 1996, and the People's Princess tragic death in a car crash the following year. Charles and Camilla eventually married in a civil ceremony in 2005. when it was announced that Camilla would become known as Princess Consort when Charles exceeds the throne. While she was always entitled to the title Queen Consort, this decision was made due to enduring sensitivities around the tragedy of Diana's life and death. Since then, however, Camilla has largely won over the public by carving her own role within the firm. She has championed a number of charitable causes including animal welfare. helping victims of domestic abuse and a host of other areas. Camilla marrying into the royal family marked a significant change for the royal family, signaling the end of a long, emotional journey. Sarah Gristwood, a royal historian, told the Netflix documentary Prince Harry's Story, Four Royal Weddings, Charles and Diana's Marriage, was, in a sense, the last gasp of the old way of royal marriages. where the bride was effectively selected for her seeming suitability as a broodmare and not because of any real attachment felt between the two people. She added, when Charles married Lady Diana Spencer, a member of the aristocracy, it was still part of the club. This was echoed by Andrew Morton, author of Diana, Her True Story, in her own words. He said, I think the marriage of Charles and Camilla, in fact, opened the door for William and Harry to marry whoever they wanted. William broke away from royal tradition when he married Kate Middleton, considered a commoner. Ems Gristwood said, when William married Kate, it was a completely different thing, marrying a girl from the middle classes. And now it's going a stage further. Harry then marrying Meghan, a divorcee, an American, mixed race origin, an actress, all of which things would once have been unthinkable. Camilla comes from an upper-class background, and had a baron for a grandfather, but was still considered a commoner. It was Kate, however, who is considered to have changed the public's perception of the monarchy. BBC presenter Anita Rani, speaking to viewers on The Queen, 70 Glorious Years on Sunday, said, she was a commoner, which I think was hugely significant because this was the first time that it was happening. She was so beautiful and so gracious. She was just princess material. Likewise, Meghan fulfilled a real-life American fairy tale as she married her ginger prince after being introduced by a mutual friend. She hung up her acting boots upon marrying Harry, and said she was determined to make a success of her new role as a duchess. However, this did not go to plan as barely two years into their marriage, the pair stepped back from their senior royal positions and moved to the U.S. Harry has found work in mental health and fighting fake news, while Meghan is returning to the creative industries. The pair signed lucrative contracts with Netflix and Spotify to produce bespoke content, though they have only produced one podcast to date. They voiced their concerns to Spotify last week about COVID-19 misinformation amid a growing outcry over Joe Rogan's show. Musicians Neil Young and Joni Mitchell had their music removed from the streaming platform in protest at Mr. Rogan's podcast, which they claim promoted anti-vaccine conspiracy theories. Spotify has since promised to add a content advisory to any podcast episode that discusses the ongoing pandemic. 
While Mr. Rogan has since apologized, Spotify has removed a number of his podcasts. JRE Missing, a website that detects deleted podcast episodes, revealed Spotify has quietly taken down 113 episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience. podcast, which they claim promoted anti-vaccine conspiracy theories. Spotify has since promised to add a content advisory to any podcast episode that discusses the ongoing pandemic. While Mr. Rogan has since apologized, Spotify has removed a number of his podcasts. JRE Missing, a website that detects deleted podcast episodes. Revealed Spotify has quietly taken down 113 episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience. <laughs> 